right, this session we're going to talk about threshing. Okay, remember from that first uh, verse, Jesus' winnowing fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his threshing floor. So what's a threshing floor? A church has to have a threshing floor in it, okay? And, and we'll get to that right now, all right? Threshing is removing the kernel of grain from its stalk, or if you're from the Midwest, it's removing the grain from the cob, okay, is what's going on. And you can see here how this works, where, where there are holes in here, and it runs through that steel, and you can see the kernels falling. And that's literally what it's talking about, okay, when it talks about threshing, all right? Threshing obviously separates, and here is the threshing uh, area right here. Here's that cylinder that I just showed you. Remember when we ended last, it, it had lifted it up to the highest point, and it goes into that threshing cylinder, okay? That is the threshing floor. There's a box, a black box around it right there. You can see it. That is the area, okay? So again, it separates. That's your threshing floor. A lot of things in Scripture happened in the threshing floor. Okay, if you do a study, you'll be so surprised what you see. Judges 6.11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When Gideon was called, he was threshing grain. Now, it says he was threshing not on the threshing floor, but in the wine press because the Midianites had come and steal his grain. He would always thresh it on the threshing floor. They'd see it, and after he did all the work, they'd come and get the grain. So here he was doing it in a wine press, but nevertheless, he was called on the threshing floor. In Ruth chapter 3, verse 2, tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. So when Ruth went to Boaz... And when Boaz, in other words, became betrothed to her, in a sense, that he was on the threshing floor. She said, you'll find him on the threshing floor, okay? Now, I love this one. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. If you go to Jerusalem today, and if you go to look at the Temple Mount, the Temple Mount is right there on the threshing floor of Aruna. That's where David built the temple. Now, I don't know what that does to you guys, but it puts chills up and down my spine because that's where God chose to build his temple. Once again, it was an area up high up on a hill where the breeze could blow through, and we're going to come to the wind in our next session, but it had to have breeze. It had to have wind in order to work, okay? But here we are again on the threshing floor, okay? So threshing separates. It clears that uh, cob away, all right? Now, in this square, these are walkers, all right? So the cob will come through here and up here, and it'll go out the back of the machine. It'll throw the cobs and the stalks, and all the dust will go out the back of the machine. That's what they needed the wind for. Like I said, we're going to come to that later as we go through this. All right? There's another close-up look of them. Now, if you can see, these things are sharp. And the other thing you have to know, nothing stands still in this machine, okay? These things are constantly moving. They call them walkers. It's, it's throwing the trash out the back of the machine. And they're just never sit still. When you start this machine up, you'll actually feel it. It, it, it moves like this, you know, because that's the way it is. That's why if you go to a church and it's boring, there's something wrong. <laughs> if you go to a church and nothing's moving and nothing's happening, it's not doing what God designed it to do, okay, as we go back to the threshing floor. All right? Threshing separates. Now, listen. Jeremiah 23, 28, and 29. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. Now, look at what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. What has straw to do with grain? The point is nothing. It has to be separated. It has to be changed. With the cob, 
the corn isn't as good, is it? You're looking for the grain. You're looking for the kernel. And you have to separate it, and you have to find a way in the threshing process, okay? Personal salvation. Please don't miss this. God has a personal plan for every person. A four- or five-year-old little boy who wants to give his heart to Jesus doesn't take the same uh, amount of treatment and the same amount of word of God as a 40-year-old man or a 50-year-old man or me when I was 30 years old. God really had to go to work on me, okay? I had a lot of sin in my life. A little child doesn't need the same thing. Now listen to this. This is adjustable. You see the distance from here to here is adjustable. You can do it on the go today. You just hit a switch. You can close this down, make it tighter. You can open it up. The threshing floor was adjustable. Now listen to what Isaiah says. Caraway is not threshed with a sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over cumin. Caraway is beaten out with a rod and cumin with a stick. Grain must be ground to make bread, so one does not go on threshing it forever. Though he drives the wheel of his threshing cart over it, his horses do not grind it. All this also comes from the Lord Almighty, wonderful in counsel and magnificent in wisdom. God knows exactly what every person needs to be separated from his sin. You see, it's so important that we understand you, one size doesn't fit all. One person will need a drastic thing to go on in his life, won't he? And it'll rock his life, and suddenly he might stop and come to the Lord. Another person, it's not that way. Other people might come to church one day and go, I need Christ in my life. Here's the point. We all have sin, and in the threshing process... You have to be separated from sin. That's why it says caraway is not threshed with a sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over cumin. You see, some grains, it's easy to knock the grain out of the stalk. It's very simple. Others, it's really hard. Let me just tell you this. This right here rotates for oats and wheat and barley and things like that, small grains. That might rotate anywhere from 700 RPMs uh, to 1,000. When you put corn through it like this, ah, uh, 300, 400, 500 max. And what these machines will do, they'll roll the cobs through and the cobs will come out whole, but they'll be completely cleaned off and all the kernels will be free. Now what we're talking about here is when somebody comes into church so we relate this properly on the threshing floor, they're separated from their sin. Where a person will come to church and they'll hear the word of God I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but they will hear the word of God and it'll cause them to repent. And they'll walk away from their sin. This is God's word. See, if you go to a church and the word of God is not preached, there's no threshing floor. Nobody will change their life. Nobody will, will move away from their sin. There will be no difference because they won't hear the word of God. And this represents God's word, okay? As we go down through this, you can see the arrow here. That rotates. And the word of God is quick and powerful. You see, it's living and it's active. And you'll see how the arrows go down through it here. And that thing rotates. But please keep in mind, it's a personal salvation plan. God knows exactly what every person needs and what has to happen that will bring them to the place where they'll change. And they'll commit to Christ and, and they'll make a huge change, okay, in their lives, all right? But you can see how the rotation is. This thing has to be running. Now let me tell you what the worst thing can happen to you when you're out in the field in one of these pieces of machinery. It's when the bearing that this sits on, there's a big bearing on each end, and you still grease these things. That's how important this is. But if that bearing goes out, the machine's done. I've changed them before. It's one of the most difficult jobs there are in 
because in the factory they bring the two pieces up and they just put it together. You can't do that when you get it home. But when that bearing goes out, you're done. There's no more threshing. There's no more working. I think a lot of churches today, there's no threshing cylinder. The word of God has been watered down. It's been taken out or the bearing's out and it doesn't turn properly and it bounces up and down and it just doesn't create an atmosphere where the soul can repent and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. I talked to a missionary one time and this is what he said to me. I was talking to him about this teaching and he said, it seems kind of violent, steel on steel. He goes, isn't that kind of scary for people that come to church? And then I asked him this question. I said, how many people do you know who freely give up sin and don't fight it at all? He stopped for a minute and he said, you have a point there. <laughs> <laughs> and the word of God, we heard it where Isaiah says it's like a hammer. It can be like a hammer. Because sometimes the sin has to be jolted away from a person or they have to be jolted so they'll separate from the sin. So please remember that there is a personal salvation. It's adjustable and it can't work without God's word. If you go to a church and there's no word of God being preached, you need to stop and think because no, no person's going to change. No soul will be changed by that, okay? Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So this is steel against steel. You see, whenever you speak the word of God to somebody, you see that iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Whenever I bring a scripture verse up to somebody, that's iron sharpening iron. And my words, I can talk to somebody and I can say, you know, it really isn't good that you keep speeding and they keep arresting you and you get these tickets and before long you won't be able, you know, <laughs> to drive. That probably won't do very much. But if you take a person to scripture and say you need to abide by the laws of man, it's in God's word, you see. And it'll make a difference in their life. It'll make a difference. Psalm 119, verse 9. I, I love this scripture text. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. Tell the story of Charles Spurgeon again. I love Charles Spurgeon, this story. He walked out into an auditorium. This is before they had microphones. They didn't have sound systems. So when he would get to a place, he would be preaching to thousands of people with no microphones. So he would check the acoustics. He walked out into an auditorium. There was nobody there, he thought. And standing up on the stage, he just went out and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he said, that sounds pretty good in here. And he went back in to prepare for his evening message. What he didn't know is the janitor was in the balcony. He was sweeping the balcony. On his deathbed, this is what he told Charles Spurgeon. He said that day when you walked out on the platform and you said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He said, I was so convicted in my heart when I heard that. He said, I had to put my broom down. He said, I felt sick. He said, I was home for days before I repented and I gave my heart to Christ. Now, Spurgeon just thought he was checking the acoustics. If you're going to check the sound, always speak God's word. Because it made such a difference. His word's quick and it's powerful. It makes all the difference, okay? Once again, now threshing separates. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. Because that's the threshing floor. That's what does it. What has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. If you think somebody has a hard heart, speak God's word to them. I've literally told this to people. I've said, if you go home tonight, they'll be telling me about a spouse or they'll be telling me about a parent or somebody they say they have the hardest heart and they're just the most terrible person. And I'll say to them, okay, we're going to pray now. And then I say, in the middle of the night, if you hear something go bang, it could be that heart changing. 
because God's word is so powerful. It's such a powerful tool. Now, there's something called re-threshing. I love this on these machines. Here's what would happen. It would, the grain comes through the machine, all right? It comes up the throat. It goes through here, and it goes onto these sieves. We're going to talk about that in our next session. But there's one little place back here in the tailgate. And if a piece of cob goes through with corn on it, a lot of times it's heavy enough, and it'll fall through, and this is what it'll do. It'll come down, and it'll go here. And you know what it does? It comes back up here, and it starts the whole process over. It's called re-threshing. The first time I taught this to, to a full congregation, one of the guys in the congregation literally stood up when I said about re-threshing, and you start all over again, and he said, that's me. <laughs> Because he, he had learned God's word. He had come to Christ. He had known it. And then he fell away. And, and the point is, God won't let you go. All right? He just will not let you go. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. Please look at this. If you get them in... If you get them into the machine, that's the key. Then the machine can work. Then the word of God can work on them. But if they're in a place where they never hear the word of God, what's going to happen? Nothing. I can tell you this. I've, had, I've watched for a whole day combining, and, and I've had an ear of corn go into the head and sit in the corner of the head and never go up that throat all day long. You know there are a lot of people like that? <laughs> they just sit in the back of church for like four years and nothing happens. But you know what? If they're still breathing on the fifth year, if they surrender to Christ, look at the difference. It made a difference for eternity for them. The key is to get them in and then nothing will snatch them out of the Father's hand. All right, Romans 5.20, the second part of it, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Because God is so loving and he is so caring. Threshing. Removing the kernel of grain from its stalk. When people come to church, once again, the key is to get them here. It really is. The key is for them to hear. Faith comes. In our next session, we're going to talk about faith. It's so important. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. You can speak it to them. If they come to church, if the church is alive and well, that threshing cylinder is going to be running. Several years ago, we went, it's actually 15 or more years ago, I went to a conference, and here's what the speakers at the conference challenged us to do. They said, you pastors go home and quit telling stories. Teach your people God's word. It changed our life in this church. It took us, it took us over a year to go through the Gospel of John. This is all I heard. I heard people say, we're not going to be in that book again, are we, on Sunday? And we said, yep, we're going to be there. We're going from, from one end to the other. We're going to go all the way through the gospel. And then it started to change. The whole idea of the church began to change. You know what I hear now? Now these are the testimonies I hear. I hear, Pastor, I was gone for a week. I was gone for a month. I went someplace else to church. And you know what people say? They say, I just wish they would have opened up God's word because I waited and waited and they wouldn't open it. There's no threshing floor. It won't change. The, the point about threshing is getting a person to part from their sin. Getting a person to accept what Jesus did on the cross. And when they repent from their sin, they're cleansed from all unrighteousness and do things begin to change. Father, I ask you to help us see today what threshing does. And how it says in your word that your winnowing fork is in your hand and you will thoroughly clear your threshing floor. Father, I pray that the churches in our nation begin to work and your word 
begins to work. In Jesus' name, amen.